So continuing our discussion on blood groups and blood typing. So first, in the previous uh, video, I talked about how A, B, O are one type of blood typing. But there is another type of blood typing, which is with the RH antigen. It adds another level of complexity with the blood, blood typing. So under the RH system, there are 30 different types of human blood group system. Okay, Then why do we only talk about RHD antigen? We only talk about RHD antigen because that's the only one that is clinically significant. Okay, Now besides this, uh, whenever we're talking about blood transfusion, it also becomes important. Um, this can give hemolytic disease of the newborn. We have that aspect of it, but it is also important uh, when we are transfusing someone. The RH antigen or the pre presence of RH antigen determines if a person is positive or negative. Okay, so what do we mean by that? What I mean is, let's say this patient has this, th let's say this is blood group patient with a blood group A and this patient has RHD antigen. When they have RH this should be an H actually, I'm sorry about that. When they have an RHD antigen, we call them positive. So this patient would be blood group A positive. If they lack RH antigen, we call them negative. So this patient would be blood group B negative. So this is, you can see how it's quite important. And we're going we're gonna to cross match and see uh, what blood groups we can give to who. You know, whether can we give, give blood group positive to a blood group negative of the same blood group if someone is blood group A negative? Can we give the blood group to blood group A positive? Or someone who is A positive, can we give them to blood group A negative? So there is that complexity that is there with the RH system. But before I move on to that point, I would like to mention that um, the antibodies that we have, in not naturally in a blood group you know here I I drew a pentavalent and um, I, I meant this is an IgM okay naturally we're gonna have IgM antibody in the blood it's not going to be IgG that's why I drew the pentavalent structure but I hope everyone picked up on it in my previous video um, so with with the ABO uh, compatibility blood group compatibility system the anti antibody that is present in the serum is going to be IgM. So blood for blood group A, it's going to be IgM. For blood group B, it's going to be IgM. For blood group O, it's going to be IgM. But whenever we're talking about the RH system, they usually, naturally, they don't have IgM. They have IgG. That's why IgG is the only immunoglobulin which can cross the placenta. So see how the RH is clinically significant in newborns because it can cro cross placenta and it can sensitize the baby. So that's where it's also important. Anyway, so before we move on, I just wanted to throw it out there. So now let's talk about transfusion. So this is the usual chart that the people follow. Am I going to do the entire chart? No, I'm just going to make a point. And, you know, this is how um, the whole thing is arranged, whether we can give... so. On the on the horizontal um, row, we have donor, and the vertical one we have the recipient. So we're going to see if we can cross match and whether we can give blood to a certain type of people. So if my donor is O negative and my recipient is O negative, can we give them the blood? Absolutely, we can. There is no antibody problem. Um, by the way, there's an interesting uh, picture that I saw on Wikipedia. I encourage you to see, see it too. The picture had blood group O here, A, B, and AB. I'm drawing here because I'm not going to complete this entire chart. So it's an easy way to find out who you can give blood to. So O you can give to A, O you can give to AB, and then you can give blood group A to AB, you can give blood group B to AB, and you can give blood group O to AB. See how the arrows are, arrows are not going in the other direction? The arrows are only following one particular direction. 
so I just wanted to make that point. Um, it's an interesting way to kind of, you know, if you're having trouble, it's an easy way to remember. Anyways, so uh, continuing on with our chart. So if our donor is O negative and our recipient, sorry, if our donor is O positive and our recipient is O negative, can you give them the blood? So let's find out. So imagine that this is our, um, you know, petri dish or wherever you want to you want to do the mixing and you have your blood group O here and this is O negative and that's why I didn't draw any antigen and then you are donating because our donor is O positive okay so you're giving this blood so you have O positive here with the antigen here okay and because this O negative had no antigen it had antibody uh, RHD so in the plasma, so see how it's can, going, to, going to attack the antigen on our O positive blood, so it's not going to work. So we cannot give this to when we have this com combination. But what about this one? What about you have O positive and O positive? Can you give them the blood? Absolutely. Okay, here is another interesting one. What about this column? If the donor is O negative and the recipient is O positive, can you give them the blood? Again, let's find out. So the scenario is a little different now because our donor is going to be O negative and a recipient. So this is a recipient, has the uh, antigen but no antibody. Now we are donating blood with no antigen. Okay, And usually we don't donate blood with the antibodies. So, and this patient is not going to cross-react with this at all, so it's fine. So we, we can give them this blood because this O negative, even though, even though it has antibodies in whole blood, because we give patient packed blood, this, whenever we're donating this O negative blood, it's not going to accompany that antibody that it usually has in the whole blood. So without these antibodies, uh, it's not going to affect our O positive um, blood, so we're not going to have any reaction. So yes, we can give them this blood. So that's, that's the interesting point that I wanted to make, that you know, whole blood, packed blood, differentiate that in your mind because we're not giving them whole blood. We're giving them packed blood. In fact, um, which brings me to the next point is whenever we are taking blood from a certain patient, not a patient, from a person, um, it goes through a whole system of centrifusion. So centrifusion is like, um, it's like a spin, spinner. It's going to spin, 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 and it's going to settle all the heavy things at the bottom and on, all the lighter things on top. Red blood cells being very heavy, it's going to settle at the bottom. All the different components, it's going to float at different levels. And that's how they separate it. So if someone needs, you know, Depending on the patient, if a patient needs uh, blood, you, we can give them blood. If someone needs, let's say, platelets, we can give them platelets. So they separate it out um, with that centrifuge process, and it's a complicated process. Uh, we don't need to really know that. We just need to appreciate the process. So we separate them out, and uh, we give pa a certain patient whatever they need. If they need blood, we give them blood. If they need plasma, we give them plasma. If they need platelets, we give them platelets. So they're separated it out. So that's another thing we have to understand about transfusion.